A lot of people ask me, why Life Force, why now? And if you've heard me share anything over the weekend, um, I'm sure some of it's valuable, but nothing is more valuable than what I'm about to say. So uh, why don't everybody, why don't you all just stand up for a second? We all have different hats that we wear in life, right? You know, some of us are parents, brothers or sisters, children. We all have things that go through our head. All these different hats, responsibilities. We're all network marketers. You have a busy hat. You probably didn't know about that, where you feel like you just got to stay busy, lots of things going on. We live in a very fast-paced world, right? I want you to grab that busy hat and take it off. You can set it on your seat if you want to, if you want to pick it up later. <laughs> and I want you to put on your business hat. I want you to think like a business professional. I want you to think like a multimillionaire, somebody who knows how to make a lot of money and knows how to seize an opportunity. Do you have it on? No, really, play along. Do you have it on? Make sure it's nice and snug. You got it? OK, go ahead and have a seat. Well, first of all, let me, let me preface what I'm about to say with this very important fact. I've had the most incredible mentors in my life. Unbelievable. I can only attribute it to God. I don't know if you believe in God or not. doesn't matter. I do. And I, there have just been times in my life where things shouldn't have gone well for me. And somebody came into my life. And that person's influence just changed me, just, just set my path on a different direction. And um, <clears throat> I was not a very, uh, most of you know I was a janitor when I got involved in network marketing. I was, not a, I was not the ideal prospect. I was not a power broker. I was not a, uh, a business person. I didn't know a lot of people. I grew up in a little town called Lansing, Michigan, the capital of Lansing, automotive town, blue-collar family. Nothing about me said businessman. Nothing. ADD, my teachers wanted me out of school. I can't believe I got passing grades. I later found out they just wanted me out of there. They didn't want me back for another year or two. Um, nothing about me said this kid has potential. I was 20 years old when I got involved in network marketing. Somebody said, I want to recruit that guy. And he was a professional, a medical professional. And I was just so honored that somebody would, you know, pick me. You ever not get picked? Right? You know, imagine a hospital where you've got all these. I was an art student, a Bible college student, and a janitor. Right? And I'm around a hospital where there's doctors and administrators, and I'm the guy wearing the blue suit pushing the broom. I guarantee I had the biggest smile in that place. Nobody was happier to have a job than I was, right? I was pushing the broom, and I could just feel people looking down at me like, what a loser, that kid's going nowhere, why isn't he in college, why isn't he doing something with his life? And you know, sometimes you get these snide remarks from people, but I, but I, did, uh, I did enjoy life, and maybe, maybe it was that that made this person pick me, but nevertheless, I got recruited by somebody who really understood network marketing. And he took me under his wing against all good reasoning. I never made the guy a lot of money, uh, but he taught me just about everything I was willing to learn. And I was a sponge for learning. And then I ended up switching to another company and again got picked up by one of the top people in that company. Uh, com a name, if I mention that name, most of you would recognize the name. This person was one of the, probably the 10 founding members of that in terms of being in the field and respected by hundreds of thousands of people. And he picked me for no good reason. I don't know why he picked me. But he picked me and he taught me everything I was willing to learn. And I was willing to learn everything. Again and again, in every area of my life, I have had the most profound experiences with mentors. And so anything that I say that makes me look good, just pass it on to those people. My parents, unbelievable people. Wayne and Jerry have met my parents. Um, 
I, they're just the most... Never heard my father or mother ever tell a lie. Ever. Never in my life. Never heard my grandparents ever tell a lie. You know, and kids are pretty good at spotting lies. Uh, never heard them tell a lie. Just people of integrity. And then I've had the good fortune of working with owners of companies like Life Force. And they think I'm there to help them. Trust me, I take more notes on them than they will ever take on me. Um, I learn from my mentors. Wayne Hillman is... I swore I was not going to do that. Doggone it. That's just my eyes sweating. I don't cry. Yes. Well, so with that set up, um, let me tell you how I feel about Life Force and why. Okay? I'm talking to business professionals right now. Am I not? Okay. Um, business professionals think differently. You've probably heard me use this example. If I went into a room full of employee-minded people this big, and I said this question, how many of you would like to make your living in the fast food hamburger business? And you were employees, and I said, let's open it up for questions. I'd hear questions like, what, are, what do I get paid? What's the hourly pay? Do I have chances for raises? What are my hours? Do I have to flip burgers? Do I have to work behind a cash register? Do you agree those would be the kinds of questions employee-minded people might ask? I go right next door to Jerry's Diner that's filled with business professionals, right? The Margies and the Waynes of the world. And I say to them, same number of people, I ask the same exact question. How many of you would like to make your living in the fast food hamburger business. Do you know what kind of questions I would get? What's my initial upfront investment? What's my ROI, my return on investment? When will I be able to move into passive income? What kind of training and support can I get? Those people aren't even assuming that I'm talking to them about an hourly job flipping burgers. They're thinking, you want to sell me a bunch of franchises? Is that what you're thinking? Or stock maybe in that company? Business professionals think differently. Do you agree? You can't spend time with people who own companies like this one and not realize they think differently than other people. Wayne has owned several companies. He doesn't think like an employee. He doesn't like to work for other people. That's how business professionals think. Business professionals have a knack for studying why industries work the way they do and why companies succeed when they do succeed. A lot of people join network marketing who are employee-minded people and they don't know how to evaluate a company properly. That's why they join these flash-in-the-pan companies that do this and this, or they never do anything. Or you, they do this and you find out they're corrupt and you feel disenfranchised and disgusted and hurt. Business professionals in our industry, professional network marketers, start out often like that. And they make some mistakes. They pick companies that aren't so good. And you all know how much work it can be to build a successful downline. And most of them don't start out with a lot of talent. And they usually blow it the first company or two. But then they figure it out. And then they have the unfortunate experience, as I have had, of having to build downlines only to watch them dissipate, only to watch the company fall or fail, and to have to start over. You know, it's difficult to start over building a downline over and over and over again. You want to talk about taking a chunk of your life out of you and taking a piece of you with it? It really is difficult to do this over and over and over again. Professional network marketers develop a knack for identifying companies that have certain qualities that the average person are not going to look for. If you weren't taught these things through hard knocks, you are not going to learn these things. So I want to talk to you about why I'm at Life Force. People have asked me, why Life Force? Why now? 
Well, there are some things that I look for. You know, as a consultant, I have the distinct privilege to be able to say that none of my clients have ever not hit the big leagues. Every single client, there's only been three before Life Force, every one of them have become industry giants, wow, the talk of the town, everybody wants to be like them kind of companies. Um, I, hey, listen, listen, it's not me. I'm telling you, it's my mentors. It's the people that taught me how to do this. Spend a little bit of time with me like Alex and the folks sitting back there, and you'll find out. I come in, I say, really, I'm not so good at corporate stuff. I'm, I'm really disorganized. And they think, oh, yeah, you're just being humble. No, I'm so not like that. I'm not good at those things. But I've had mentors, and I've had a lot of hard knocks. And it's really simple to have that kind of success in this industry if you have mentors like I've had. But also, um, I do card tricks, some of you know. I did a card trick with Jared earlier, right? And uh, I dealt, you know, shuffled the cards around. He cut the deck so I wasn't dealing off the top of the deck. And I dealt him five cards, and I dealt five cards, and I looked at his face, and I told him every card he had in his hand, right? Okay, so... Um, what he did not know is that I memorized the whole deck. That was my trick. All I had to do was look at one card in my hand, and I knew every card you had, and I could have told you every card in the entire deck. So um, that's a nice trick, though. Makes people think I'm reading their body language and all that other kind of good stuff. The fact is that trick is easy if you learn how to memorize a deck of cards. It's really easy to have success with every single client if you've got a little trick up your sleeve. I know how to pick a company that's going to make it. Does that make sense? It's, it's almost like stacking the deck in my favor. I know how to pick a company that's going to make it. And there's some things involved with that company that maybe need some adjustments, maybe they need some, some fresh ideas, or maybe some of the wisdom that I've collected from, from my mentors, things like that. But, but typically, they're pretty much on the verge of making it anyway. And that's what I found in Life Force. I'm going to tell you, most of you have heard the story, but I'm going to tell you how Life Force came about. Uh, I was looking for another client, and I've never just emailed people. Typically, you know, the companies kind of pick me, and I wander around the country forever, you know, meeting owners and stuff. They, they try to get a hold of me, and they fly me out, and they wind me and dime me. And, you know, I thought, this time I'm going to do it a little differently. I'm going to just look at some companies. I'm not one of these people that keeps track of the industry and know who's doing what in the industry. I don't care about all that stuff. And so I started researching companies, and I started picking companies that I thought might have a chance to succeed, uh, hit a sweet spot where they're really going to grow. And for whatever reason, I, I picked Life Force, and I sent Wayne and the company an email. And I didn't know Wayne's email address, so I just thought, you know, if I were a CEO, my, my email address might be CEO at, right? And I happened to catch Wayne Hillman. Um, and then, you know, I started getting all these responses from all these companies, and my wife and I were sitting on our couch watching television and working on our laptops, and she knew what I was doing. And, you know, I'm looking at all these emails from all these company owners, and she was busy doing something, not even paying attention to what I was doing, and she leaned over and she said, that company right there. I said, what? That company right there. What do you mean, that company right there? You need to talk to those people right there. She said, I don't know. I said, a Life Force? I don't know who Life Force is. Um, I don't know either, but you need to talk to those people. I get a good feeling about them. They're good people. Well, listen, you know, I'm not the brightest candle in the, the uh, chandelier, but I've learned to listen to my wife when she gets those kinds of feelings. Like, okay, you know, I'm going to, all right, honey. You know, um, but I came, from my, I came from my previous company situation with some hurt. Um, anybody ever have hurt? And so, you know, it's interesting. Wayne sent me an email and said, you know, we want you to come down. And I met this team, and I was, you know, kind of, you know, a little bit 
hesitant and they were maybe a little bit hesitant, but Wayne kept talking about they were been you know, they got some praying for somebody to come and I've been praying for somebody to work with and you know, so that's my personal journey is we kinda met on this real tentative situation and we were both looking for the right place. I'm so tired of looking around. I love to build downlines. I I love to do what you're doing. This thing right here that I'm doing is accidental. This is not something that I chose for myself. I didn't choose to be a behind-the-scenes guy. I love doing what you're doing because that's where all the money is. That's where all the freedom is. That's where all the fun is. Um, and so I was really secretly looking for a place that I could call home and stay there for the rest of my life and not have to keep running around, you know, helping all these other people become mega wealthy, and then I just move on to the next one. So, you know, Wayne and I started talking and. One of the first things I typically do, and I didn't feel like I needed to do it with them. Uh, I might have told them that I typically do this. But one of the first things that I, that I typically do, because I've worked, I was a ministry consultant, people who have large audiences and sometimes have large egos. Sorry, my fellow ministers. Uh, but, you know, if somebody's got too big of an ego, I, can't, I know you can't help that. You can't, you can't fix that kind of a thing. There's not much you can do about it. So I've learned to ask this question of my clients, and it is this. Uh, you know, I, I say there are three things I will never do for you. I will never lie for you. I will never cheat anybody for you. And I, and I will never flatter you. And I'm extremely opinionated. Do you still want to hire me? And I do that to pop the bubble and test the ego. Is it still humble enough? You know, you've got to have an ego to be a leader. Look, you can't be a pushover. But I got to find out, is there room in there for growth? And I also want to kind of set the stage for the things that I don't want to be a part of. Well, um, I didn't feel like I needed to do that with Wayne. I don't think I did that. I may have talked about it. But um, every day when I would come in after that, I was, I was feeling out this team to see if I could trust them. Because even though I say that to my clients, I usually find out very quickly that it is not the case. I usually catch them lying the first week. I catch them cheating the first week. And I usually have to spend a lot of time mending wounds in the field from all the lying and cheating going on and all the corruption. And it's really hard to work in. If you're a decent person, and I work really hard to try to be that kind of a person, it's really hard. It's really hard to put up with that for too long. And you can still help them find a lot of success, but it's hard to think, I want to make my home here. Right? I just don't want to live in a house like that. I just don't like it. And you know what impressed me? I just kept waiting, okay, when's the lie going to come? When's the cheating going to come? When's, okay, let's say this, but let's really do this. I kept waiting for that to happen. I have never heard the Hillmans ever once tell a lie. Ever. I can't say that about anybody in 30 years. I can't say that about a company. I've never heard it. Not once. I have never been asked to keep this on the down low. We're going to really do this and we're going to tell them. Never have I heard the Hillmans. Or, or, or this management team. Right? You can't, you can't be a good person and surround yourself with bad people. I've never heard this team cheat anybody. I don't know about it. I've never seen it. I've never been asked to compromise, ever, one time. And I kept waiting for that bubble to pop. And it just never popped. And I started thinking, man, maybe Mimi, my wife, maybe she was right. What is different about this company is the integrity, right? It's three things. It's, it's humility. It's honesty and it's honor. You know, I have seen people give Wayne every single reason to terminate them. I would have terminated them far sooner. And I love people, but I would have got rid of that cancer in the field long before he would. Same with Margie. Listen, you know, to protect you, we have to get some people out because they'll ruin your business. If they're cheating and lying or, you know, doing stuff that's going to get us in trouble with the regulators. You know, I'm, not, I'm a gentle, kind, merciful person. 
But I've watched Wayne every time someone gave him every reason to find an excuse to punish them. He never was punitive, ever, one time. Oh, my God, you have no idea what that means to you as a network marketer. I have had people taken from my downline. Two companies, two companies, people in my team moved to another team, and those people became the top earners of the company. I showed the Nasir's a, a text from one of them yesterday, loves me, thanks me, but he's no longer in my team in that company. I've never seen any, you guys can't find anything like that going on in this company. It doesn't exist. You know how rare that is? That's the kind of place you want to call home. Right? Because I could go back, I could go back to a lot of these companies and I could build a team. But I, I'd always wonder, when's the hammer going to drop? When are they going to take it and move it and move my money and rip me off just because things aren't going the way they want them to go? They're going to strip me. And I just kept waiting for something like that to appear. It never appeared. What do I have for time, Christina? Thank you. Um, so to me, that's what I started looking for. Right? I, I look for that because your future depends on that. I have a friend. I won't mention his name. I love this guy. He's been my upline several times. This poor guy, I've watched him be in probably in the last 10 years, I bet I've watched him be in about five companies, six companies. He's the last company he started with. He was involved in another company I was involved with. They moved people out from underneath him. Same story. He just got disgusted and left. The company he's with now, he uh, built it from scratch, and he's got 200,000 people in it, two years. You know what? I fear for my friend. He's going to have to start over again. I hate to think it, but I, I looked at that company. It was one of the companies I looked at, and I just I didn't feel that good feeling there. And I, I didn't get that good sense, and I just couldn't, I couldn't work with them. That's a hard thing to do to start over. And that's one of the things that people at the lower levels of this industry never hear about is that kind of scandalism, that kind of awful thing. I've heard about it. I've lived it. I've paid the price. I've lost millions of dollars because of that kind of thing. And what it did most to me is it jaded me. It made me think, I am never going to find that company. I've even gone so far as to twice try to start a company of my own. That's about the stupidest thing you could ever do if you're me because you don't want a guy with this level of ADD running your company, right, Alex? Um, not a good thing. I didn't do very well. Uh, lost a lot of money doing that kind of thing. But I, the only reason why I did it is because I thought I want to be a part of a good company with good people. I didn't think I was ever going to find it. So I didn't know Life Force existed. I didn't know people like this existed. Uh, in this kind of business where people can get rich fast. We've all seen what happens to celebrities when they come into money too quickly. It changes you. It tests you. The hardest test is not poverty. Trust me, I've been poorer than anybody in this room, I bet. Uh, but I'll tell you, the harder test is the success test. Can you handle the praise of people? Can you handle the flattery? Can you handle people you know, patting you on the back and telling you all this good stuff and then go home and handle your wife and kids not saying the same thing? Can you handle the challenges that come along at an ego? I'm telling you. Okay, so let me get into the other things that I look for. Professional network marketers look for a handful of things. I would say there are about four things that they look for what most network marketers, professionals, look for is they want the sweet spot. They just assume that they're going to have to build over and over again. They, what they do is they learn how to find that diamond in the rough. You know what a sweet spot, is, sweet spot is? A sweet spot is like in a golf club. If you hit the ball in that exact spot, you're going to get some distance that you're not going to get from hitting it in any other part of the club. Baseball bat has the same thing. It's a sweet spot. You hit it there. That ball's flying. You hit it a couple inches above that, it's not going nearly as far. In this industry, companies have a sweet spot, and that is where the work that you do gets you so much more distance than it would if you're not in the sweet spot. Most people, unfortunately, make the stupid mistake of joining a company after they've already hit their sweet spot. Hey, they're the fastest growing company in the world right now, blah, blah, blah. 
Fantastic. It's, you missed it. The time to join was like two years ago, three years ago when that happened. It's like buying a stock. You don't buy a stock after it's peaked. You buy a stock just before it's going to peak. That's the idea. That's what everybody dreams of, right? Well, in this business, you can learn to pick those things. And I'm going to give you some secrets that not too many people know about, but I know about because hard knocks and hanging around with thousands of top network marketing professionals. They have four things. Or if you're David Collister to make things long, they have five things. Um, or four things, maybe. I should do it like that. Uh, company stability. Number one, company stability. Listen, contrary to popular opinion, professional network marketers do not join brand new companies. The only ones that do that are, is, are those who are possibly part owners or they have a pre-existing downline that they can shift over to a new company. No intelligent network marketer is going to gamble their career on an untested company. I don't care what you hear. It doesn't happen. Don't join a brand new company. Stupidest thing in the world. You ruin all your friendships because that thing is untested. So they look for stability. One of the things that determine the stability is not just, um, uh, you know, do they have a lot of money? That's not even the most important thing. It's really more about do they, have they had some success before? Have they had some wave? How did they handle that? Where did their egos go? What happened to their money? Did they start buying stuff too fast and spend all their money? But, but the most important thing that they look for is they look for the management team. Who runs the company? You know how investors, smart investors, big investors, invest or buy companies? They meet the management team, right? They don't just buy the stock because it looks good on paper. They want to know who these people are. The number one thing that determines a stock investment for smart investors is they want to know who the management team is. Because that will tell you everything about that company. They will tell you if somebody's going to overcome obstacles. Because every company hits obstacles, don't they? Every company has challenges. But the kind of people behind the scenes tells you if they're going to make it or not. So you will never find a professional network marketer join a company without first going and meeting the people who run this company. Will not happen. They insist on it. It doesn't matter if they have to spend $5,000 to go across the world and join the company. Whatever it is, they're going to go meet those owners. And they're not just going to you know, just meet them. They're going to spend some time with them. They're evaluating the integrity, the, the genius, the credibility of these people. So the company stability is really important. But, but they want to see, can they weather the storms? Mostly it's about stability. They have something that locks them in. Look at Life Force, 28-year-old company. It started in 19, what was it, 84? Do any, does anybody remember 1984? You talk about a hard time to start a business. You just about couldn't pick a harder time to start a business than 1984. Wayne and Jerry and Margie got this thing off the ground in one of the hardest economies that the U.S. has had. Uncertainty. We were all the talk on the street was nuclear war. We were in a cold war with Russia. We were worried about the, the big bomb dropping on us. Right? So they started the company them, and they have weathered storm after storm after storm. You know, the products, they, the next thing is company products. Um, you know what I asked about the products when I got, came here? What's your product? Body balance. It's been, the, it's been the number one product for 28 years. You know what I asked about it after that? Nothing. All I needed to hear is 28 years and thousands of people using that one product. You don't have to be a friggin' scientist to realize there's some credibility right there. Right? I, <laughs> I'm not a genius, but I know how to rely on the genius of other people. And when you've had people around the world test it and test it and test it, and they don't mind telling you what they think about it. They don't mind telling the company what they like and don't like. And it's still around. It's still working. I don't care what's in it. 
I'll give me some of that stuff. I want to drink as much as I can get, right? That's all I, I didn't need to know anything else about that. And my wife's like, David, you don't know anything about the product line. I don't need to. I know it's great. Just give it to me. I'll drink it. Um, I'm telling you, that's, that's a big deal. The third thing that they look for is innovative marketing strategies. Look, here's the thing. This industry is constantly changing. Why is that? Because it's a people business. And do people stay the same? Constantly changing. Look at the changes we've gone through just in the last 15, 20 years with the Internet. You know, you, know, you go through an airport and you see those empty banks or hotels and you see those empty banks. I asked my kids, do you know what those, those things are, those wooden things hanging on the wall? They said, no, what are they, Dad? I said, those are phone banks where phones used to be. Really? People used to have to go and talk on a phone with a cord on it like that? Really? They, I mean, doesn't even register in their mind, right? It's hard for them to conceive. Things change. Uh, one of the things that companies need are innovative marketing strategies. Those are some of the things that, that people like me can bring to the table. And we've got some of the best. We've got uh, the Got My Three, Down Economy. You can get your products for free. Rips the old excuse, I can't afford it, right out from underneath them, doesn't it? Is that right? Ten minutes, thank you. So um, we have, uh, we've got the Dream Academy. I'm telling you, someday you're going to be able to say, I was there when. That place over there is going to be teeming with people, not once a month, not once every six weeks, not once a week. Every day there will be hundreds, if not thousands of people moving about in that building over there. Wayne's dream for that building. That's absolutely. It will be used, and it will be the talk of this industry. And I promise you, oh, what a copycat industry we are in. There is so little innovation. Uh, everybody's going to try to copy us. They're not going to get it right fast enough. They're not going to get it right fast enough. Because once you've got something like this, this is going to make all the difference in the world. Most of you haven't studied the compensation plan on the Simple Dream Launch Kit that's attached to the Dream Academy. And you really should take a good look at it. Trainers get paid to be trainers. Trainers can make a lot of money in life force. And they can have a lot of opportunity to have their voice heard where they've been muffled in other companies. Trainers in this industry are some of the best people in the world. If you've ever met them, they're very generous. They love to share. They love to teach. They don't have secrets. They want to tell everybody everything they know. Those are the best kind of people in this industry. In How many of you have read The Tipping Point? In The Tipping Point, they're called mavens. Collectors of knowledge and people that love to share that knowledge. They're one of the three kinds of people that if you don't have them, you don't succeed, you don't become a household name. To the extent that you have them, you will become a household name. Life Force, hmm, I believe, Wayne, I believe, Life Force is going to be the biggest network marketing company in the world. I think we're going to slam dunk. Billion dollar company. Let's shoot way past that. Let's topple Amway and Avon. You know why? The reason, the reason why is we're going to collect the mavens of the industry. They're going to go, wow, somebody cares about what I think. I get to go teach people. I get to take this message around the world and get paid to do it. We're going to collect all the mavens. We're going to collect all those collectors of knowledge and teachers of knowledge. We're going to get the best of the best of the best. And people will say of Life Force members, they are the best trained networkers in the entire world. We will have so many spies in our midst. They will be sitting in every Dream Academy going, what are these people doing? What are they teaching? We've got our earn while you learn concept. Or you're going to pull out your phones today. How many of you were nervous when they said, Pull out your phone. You're going to talk. Raise your hands. If you're not nervous, you're lying. I'd be nervous. You know what? But it's easy to do it in the safety of your peers, isn't it? It's so much easier than going home with nobody around and going, now what was I supposed to do again? 
and then you find a good reason not to do it. Right? That's a huge thing. I'm telling you, this is unique. This is unique. We've got so many innovations. We've got the simple sample system. The simple sample system, I'm telling you. You want duplication? Sampling. Look, it's, it's, so, it's, it's close to something they, that we experience. We walk down the aisle of a store like uh, Costco, and you ever see anybody sampling anything there? Hello? Grocery store? It's there. But what they're doing is they're sampling products. We sample a business. That's the nuance that's a little bit tough for people to get. It's going to get easier for people to get it because we're all going to get it eventually. And once you're in a community that gets it, you're going to learn how to sample your business instead of your products. It's the key to success. But I'm telling you, that simple sample system is so powerful. When you can give a couple that maybe had their finances ravaged by the down economy, watch their savings, their retirement plan devastated, they're 50, 60 years old looking at retirement and going, I'm not being hired because jobs aren't available enough. I have to go work at Walmart. How am I ever going to build up my, I'm going to outlive my retirement. Social Security is going down. What's going to happen to me? Right? There, there are people scared to death right now. And you, somebody walks in and starts talking to them about recruit, recruit, recruit. You know, sell, sell, sell. They're thinking, I'll, I'm never going to make it. I'm going to die poor. People that worked so hard for so long to save and pinch pennies, they had their finances devastated by the con men in Wall Street and the banks and the insurance companies and these big corporate companies. They've been ruined. When you can go to them and talk to them about just learn to do this, learn to give some people some stuff, learn to get three commitments that don't involve money, talk about your business, don't don't deny them the opportunity to say no for themselves. Make sure that they know what they're saying no to before you let them say no. Don't deny them the right to live a life of decency in their old age. Don't stop them by just giving them a product sample. That's not right. That simple sample system is a world changer. I'm telling you, we've got it down. And you guys, you guys are the pioneers of this. It's up to you. The economy of this entire country, who knows, might be on you. So, um, one last thing. What do you do with the sweet spot? Well, no, there's a fourth qualifier, vast untapped market potential. Vast untapped market potential. Professional network marketers looking for a sweet spot say, okay, all these other things are good, but do they have potential? Does their product have potential or their, their product development team have potential? They look at market. Have they, there are some companies that have gotten so big that they probably can never recover again without a miracle. They've just had their heyday. You know, Wayne and Jerry and Margie started out marketing, as most of you know, our product through health professionals, 6,000 of them. The average person didn't have the opportunity that you have to market body balance. So they started with direct sales through a very niche market of health professionals. And then they, they merged into direct selling and then started making the shift slowly toward network marketing. And they asked me to help them with some strategies that would make them full network marketing. And that's what you see with the Got My Three and the Dream Academy and some of these things, the sampling system. These are little adjustments. I mean, that's 1%. This company was at 210 degrees. Water boils at what? 212. Two, that two degrees makes a lot of difference. It's, you know, without it, you don't boil your pasta. You just have hot water. So I, I had a little bit of help, but the bulk of the work was already done. So I brought a little bit, but the credit does not land at all on my shoulders. Not even a little bit. You have no idea how hard it is to have a sweet spot in place, to get a company groomed for a sweet spot. It is so hard to keep a company around in network marketing. Thousands of them will join start this year. You didn't know that, did you? A thousand MLMs or more will start this year, and they'll never make it 30 days. You didn't know that. You know how hard it is to be around 28 years? Oh, my goodness. That's hard. Hard work, right, guys? Hard, hard work. Listen, you talk about some genius. Wayne Hillman has a lot of what I have. He and I were street kids. We grew up on the streets. You know, 
I don't have a college education. I didn't make it through art school. Wayne, same thing. We just learned how to survive, didn't we? We learned how to work harder than everybody else and be diligent and tenacious and don't quit. You know, we've had things going against us, but he never gave up. He never stopped. He has kept this company safe. Look at this place. Company's debt-free. He knows how to hire the right team. Ian, John, Alex, Christina, all of these people. I mean, I walk around here and I feel like I'm in a treasure chest of people that I wish I would have seen 20 years ago. Okay, so that's what network marketers look for. And before I bring the Hillman family up, they didn't know I was going to do this at all. This whole message was improv. We didn't know about it until 20 minutes before this thing started. Um, the, um, what do you do with a sweet spot? Listen really closely right now. What do you do with a sweet spot? You're catching a company just before it's going to do this. I'm not going to tell you it's going to last forever. Typically, a sweet spot like that will last anywhere from three to five years. I think we have potential to do a five or seven year sweet spot run. I really do. I really believe that we have what it takes to have the best sweet spot, longest sweet spot in the history of this industry. But I can tell you they don't last forever. That doesn't mean the company goes away. It just means you can't keep growing like this forever. It's impossible. What you do with a sweet spot is everything you possibly can do. You have never in your entire life sat in a seat in a company that is in a sweet spot like this company's in a sweet spot. I've been in some doozies. I've never been in one like this where I could trust the owners, trust the executive team to have my back, ever. And I've given them plenty of reasons not even to like me half the time. Right? And they've never done anything punitive, ever, ever. You have no idea how happy I am to be here. This is a gift from God. Wayne used to say, David, you're the angel sent from heaven for this company. No, Wayne, no. Life Force, your family, this executive team is the angel to this tired man's life. What you guys have built here so far is the most beautiful, amazing, glorious thing that I have ever seen. I made that decision two or three months ago that I was going to do it. I just didn't know how or when, and it's been really, really hard on us. Um, then I saw something yesterday, Wayne, that um, quite honestly I didn't know if I was going to see it. I wouldn't expect it of you. But... How many of you have read the book, Good to Great? And I know I'm running long. I'm so sorry. How many, please raise the hands if you have read Good to Great. I don't read books very often. I have to listen to them. I do it while I'm driving, so don't drive near me. If you have not read Good to Great, you need to go out and buy that book tonight. Not tomorrow. Not, not the next day. Not when you get home. If you have your... If you have Audible and you listen to audiobooks, your Nook or, you know, whatever, your Kindle, get it. Read that book. You will see what I'm saying in that book about what, what it takes to go from a very good company like Life Force has been to a great company. One of the biggest tests that Jim Collins talks about in that book is what differentiates a company from being good to great is can it sustain, sustain itself through another generation of leadership? That's the only question. You don't know how long it's going to last. Is it so dependent upon its original founder, its original CEO? Can it survive that? And most companies do not. Read that book. It will change your life. It will not tell you great things about life force only. It will change you as a person, as a parent, as a leader in your team. It will, it will help you know. It's just a book about the data. It's not a guy's opinion. It's data that he collected. Powerful book, right, Ms. Sears? Listen, what I saw yesterday meant more to me. It did more to confirm that I'd made a great decision with my life than just about anything. The wisdom that Wayne Hillman had. Listen, Margie didn't even know. I stood up here going, what's going on here? Wayne's turning over. The you know why that is so powerful? 
he is around to guide her. He is around with Jerry to watch over her making decisions. Listen, she's been involved with this company longer than anybody, except Jerry. Remember Wayne said that she hired him? Right? Listen, Margie's very competent. I love you, Margie. I think you're awesome. There are some things about you that are different than your father and some strengths that your father has that you don't have. But I see strengths in you that you have that he maybe doesn't have as strong as you do. But I know the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. I know it's there. But what I see in Wayne is he's taken the strength that he has. He is a powerful leader. He's a strong man. He is a fighter. This guy knows how to keep this company alive and running and moving forward. And that's what I admire in him so much. I learned so much from his tenacity. But what, what, happened, yesterday, what happened yesterday says to me, this company is going to be safe. Because it's not going to... This transition is not going to happen because Wayne ends up, you know, in a, in a hospital bed unable to ever get out of it again. Thank you for being here to wait today, Wayne, and letting people know that you're still feeling well. We love you, and we need to know that you're doing well. But this man's wisdom, listen, entrepreneurs that start companies and call their companies their kid, you know what they almost never do? They never turn it over. You know what's wrong with that? They never allow the new leader to merge into that role, and they don't watch over it. So it's like a, it's a dramatic shift, and everything's all in turmoil and upside down, and nobody knows what to do, and there's fumbling and shifts and political stuff happening, and, and it just ends up falling apart. What he did yesterday, I believe, was the greatest thing that he has ever done, except deciding to take the role as CEO, to make sure that this company is going to last for his legacy for his great-grandkids and great-great-grandkids, but also for your grandkids. And you, when, when Michael gets up there and talks about how this company can be passed on for generations, read your contract. It can. Most companies aren't going to let you do that. It's there. You know why I'm happy as a network marketer? Because I know that 50 years from now, the Hillman family is going to pass on this company in the same way that Wayne Pass it on to Margie. 